Hi, I'm Dr. Ann Pendo, the Senior Medical Director for Experience of Caring at Intermountain Healthcare, and welcome to Leadership at the Forefront of COVID. Today, I am excited to be talking with Whitney Buckle. Whitney is the System Antimicrobial Stewardship Pharmacist Manager at Intermountain Healthcare, and we are excited to have you here today. Thanks so much for having me, Ann. So talk to us a little bit about your life pre-COVID and then what happened once things changed. Yes, so as the System Antimicrobial Stewardship Pharmacist Manager, which is a mouthful, I lead a team of really talented, impressive infectious diseases pharmacists. And throughout the system in all settings, we do our best to improve the antibiotic use of, or the use of antibiotics in our patients. And when COVID first came on the scene, you know, we thought this might be, I thought this might be like MERS or SARS and really affect travelers um, only, but I think it was really in March when it, it became such um, a local a local problem and not just this theoretical problem in another country. And my job shifted almost entirely to COVID. A lot of the projects that we were working on to improve antibiotic use, uh, many of those were either significantly slowed or put on hold. And so my main focus was trying to figure out what is the best use of antibiotics, but also antivirals and other treatment options in our patients um, with COVID. And then also trying to provide a system perspective and trying to coordinate care across the health system, which is really complex. Yeah, as you're talking, maybe you could share with us why it's important to think about how we use antibiotics in your former life. Yes, so antibiotics are one of our precious resources where the use um, or you know even appropriate use as well as inappropriate use will drive antimicrobial resistance, which is a national health concern, an international health concern that really complicates our ability to do surgeries and transplants and other things. So if we um, appropriate use, appropriately use antimicrobials, then we can reduce resistance and we also can reduce cost and also we're focusing on improving outcomes and safety. And we know that antibiotics um, are not always safe and people have adverse effects from them. So we try to be thoughtful there as well. So really, it sounds like the entire focus of what you were doing shifted now to treatment of one particular illness. Yes, that's right. Uh, yes. And I joke a little bit too. I mean, um, that is clearly where all of um, the new effort and trying to keep up with the fast paced literature has happened. And at the same time, we still have patients presenting with infections to our facility and we're still working on providing them quality care. So it was almost an add on um, focus. Wow. So are there one or two things that you've implemented in the time of COVID that you that is either new or you hadn't thought about um, doing before? Yeah, um, I think with learning a new disease and trying to be nimble, um, I've been a part of the therapeutics committee, which has been such an honor and such a talented group of people to work with. It's been a joy. And one of the things that I think we implemented that um, was really affected was COVID rounds. So um, having a set time and day where clinicians and uh, research assistants and um, it was a very multidisciplinary group of pharmacists and physicians come together to have real time information. You know, something might change from week to week or day to day. And this is one time a day that we could get together and, and provide up to date information to our clinicians. I think that was really successful. And then um, the other big thing that's been interesting is, you know, trying to navigate um, remdesivir and this new environment that we have. Um, remdesivir is a, a Vi antiviral medication for COVID. And usually we use drugs after they're FDA approved. And this is a rare situation in which we're using a drug before it's FDA approved and supply is distributed in a very different way. And so working on the supply issues, the distribution and, and everything else has been a, a very new experience, but very rewarding. I'll bet. I'm thinking about the intensity of your work and how you were able to maintain and sustain that level of engagement over these last four months. Yeah, 
uh, my team, I think, has really kept me afloat. Um, we have a daily huddle. And before COVID, that huddle was, you know, maybe 10 or 15 minutes. And after COVID, it's like 30, 35 minutes. And there's just so much to cover. And everybody has so many questions. And it's, um, it's really nice to work with my team and have that time with them every day. Um, I will say that things are kind of funny. We volunteered to do some things on the weekends. And uh, every time I, I introduce a new thing that like might involve some weekend coverage, I'd be like, oh, it'll just last a couple of weeks, you know, <laughs> like three, four. And then, you know, it gets to week five or six. And finally, I have to ask for help and say, OK, we need a better strategy for, for coverage. And, it, and, and then it happened again where we started a new process and we we're trying to be consistent every day of the week, not just weekday weekends. And then. You know, you're like, it'll only be a couple more weeks. It'll only be a couple more weeks. And I put my foot in my mouth and then we have to come up with a new sustainable strategy. So um, we are trying to focus more on sustainability now. So it sounds like you're paying attention to that, knowing that really you can't sustain <clears throat> a high level of functioning without break, without a break. Right. And I think really learning how to structurally make it so that people can disconnect. Um, I, I think... Even if people are allowed to disconnect, I think I'm working trying to figure out how do I give that permission? How do I make it really clear? How do we better support it structurally so people can get the breaks that they need? Yeah, I bet that's been a challenge. I hear that often. You know, how do we, it sounds good in practice, but how do we really implement the taking time away? Yes, yes. And um, I myself hadn't even taken time away until this past weekend. So also trying to model it. And it was amazing just to take a four day weekend and, and get up into nature. Good for you. That's so great. And how do you balance? Because I know you've got small people at home. Yes. That rely on you. Yes. Um, you know, things have really changed for me with uh, working from home now. And uh, I think there was a lot of growth <laughs> there in trying to figure out what that looked like. Uh, with with my family. Um, but I think setting clear boundaries, one thing that I do is I like to take a walk at the end of the day to be sort of that mental break since I'm not driving home and getting that usual mental break. Yes. I like to yes. substitute it with a walk so that I can transition to being at home. And then, um, yeah, I think we're also just doing things that I look forward to. We bought some new patio furniture and we're doing eating, you know, eating outside and doing other things with the family to make our space really welcoming. I love that. Love that. In our last few minutes together, anything that you would want to share with our audience about what you've learned about yourself as a person or as a leader? Yes. Um, this has definitely been a really exciting time, and it's also been a really challenging time. I think that we've had to make a lot of decisions with not as much data as we normally would like to make decisions. And what I've learned a little bit and struggled with is how do you communicate um, decisions that are made? How do those decisions you know, get made, uh, but also have the flexibility to change, but then maybe not change every day? And so I've really focused a lot on communication. I think that's hopefully, I'll continue to work on it because it's never finished, but continue to work on how to communicate recommendations more effectively. I found that when we don't do a good job of explaining the rationale behind the changes, um, all the discussion that might've gone into it and the process behind it, and if our clinicians don't understand it, then we're not being as effective as we can be, so. So focused on the why and clear communication. Love it. Yes. Love it. Thanks so much for being with us today, Whitney. It's been a pleasure. And thank you everyone for joining our conversation about leadership at the forefront of COVID. Talk to you all soon.